Wait, is that a phone? Look at the performance, the graphics. That thing's a gaming machine. A new challenger. Is that Faker? That man's a gaming legend. Everyone, fasten your seatbelts. And here we go. So guys and girls it's no special secret why you're probably watching this video. If the thumbnail and or description including title was not enough to elaborate today's Technus Corner video theme, then perhaps some good old South Korean and or US Western propaganda may just sweeten those juices a little and to touch on why perhaps I'm so late to this party. It's been sitting on my desk collecting dust for 3.5 weeks. The reason it's taken this long is I did intend to capture the moment on camera, however poorly my setup may be but was also feeling slightly anxious at one's purchase although secretly savoring it, with eager anticipation growing to point of no return that is today's unboxing video with it. Honestly I have been rather busy and it's not every day that you're on the go, go to, device, for almost every means of communication gets replaced, but with the extra time came the acknowledgement that it definitely was time to retire my current comms device the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus at least into a more fitting role for a phone flagship of be it the yesteryear. Without a moment further ado, let's go on this journey together of new tech discovery as it's been four years since a new device shall be, palmed perhaps, by my hands tonight. So let's go. Why did the iPhone go to school and get a good education? So it could finally compete with Samsung's Galaxy. What is the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra? The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is the latest flagship phone from Samsung, released in 2023. Oh my god, I think it's time. It features a large 6.8-inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display, with a 120Hz refresh rate and HDR10 Plus support. It is powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 chipset and comes with up to 12GB of RAM and up to 1TB of storage. The phone has a large 200MP main camera sensor, as well as two telephoto lenses, 3X and 10X optical zoom, and an ultra-wide lens. It also has a 12-megapixel front-facing camera. The phone is equipped with a 5,000 mAh battery with 45-watt wired charging and wireless charging capabilities. The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra is also IP68 dust and water-resistant, and comes with an ultrasonic fingerprint reader and support for the S Pen. The phone runs on Android 13 with one UI 5.1. Where are all the other accessories? Here we go, I'm shaking. Looks like there's a little slip here. I'm going to pull it aside like that. We've got a cover just here beautifully. Nicely accented midnight black. So feature packed especially from my perspective and pretty much being a handheld virgin pertaining to new held tech, pardon the pun. I can only address this space, the space of mobile tech from a PC tech's perspective. But lordly have I heard some interesting and in cases misleading albeit flat out misinformation from some YouTubers. And this I could not allow to pass by idly. Like previously mentioning getting my juices flowing, no wait, that was yours, no, but ours all together. I had succumbed to what I hoped was the dreaded clickbait and or, oh no. Syndrome. Where thumbnail after thumbnail started to pour through increasing my anxiousness in turn curiosity to press plays to discover pretty much. Wrong information being given in relation one of the S23s, what I believe is an awesome source feature, the virtual memory or RAM allocation that turns out, according to technically Alex YouTube, is set to on by default. You heard me correct. OMG this feature is ON. But seriously. See right here it says RAM Plus uses your phone's storage space to provide a virtual memory. So essentially your phone creates more memory by using your phone's storage space. And on the Samsung website it says... RAM Plus is a feature on your Galaxy phone that provides intelligent memory expansion by using your storage as virtual memory. And this setting was on for me, so it might be on for you as well. And this setting is called RAM Plus. Tap on memory, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see this option here that says RAM Plus. Plus. Now mine was enabled and set to 8 gigabytes. And if it's on for you as well, then you should probably turning this off. It may look like a great feature on the surface. It can be detrimental to your phone. We have so much RAM in these phones that there's really no point for us to have background um, RAM Plus enabled. My phone had RAM Plus enabled by default. So if this is the case for you as well, you should probably disable it as well. Save yourself from battery implications that this might have or any chance of stressing your SSD. 
So know that we are all caught up on the drama just in relation to what I would say is a negative Nancy these comments in the section below. Luckily spurred some hopefully intelligent discussion in relation to not always believe what you hear on, in this case be it the tube. My sentiments are encompassed exactly in relation to this potential features drama video from Mr. Alex here. On a side note, I hope it does not look like I'm being a shit, but I have a duty of care to you my viewers at the Technus Corner, to provide you with at the very least diligently sought information that is correct and concise from my experience, or cross-referenced from true sources, so that we can have empowered choices made available to you for the gratitude of being the Technus Corner's viewers. On that note I think if you're not already subscribed please do so now as it's free and I'm always humbly grateful for it. And in retaliation the comments read as follows. One comment read. This is not an issue on modern devices. PCs have had virtual memory since 2005 and they all still run okay as far as I know. This shouldn't even begin to affect devices unless you have them for 10 plus years. Not to mention. Marques actually did a video about virtual memory in 2016 saying that Android devices have always been secretly using it. Android 12 just happened to release the feature where the user can deactivate it. Another comment took a similar tone reading. For all the idiots out there. If you run out of RAM from excess usage then any virtual RAM, even though slower physical RAM is still beneficial to the phone user's experience due to the simple fact that without it turned on and perhaps say having exhausted your memory be it 12 or 8 GB of RAM total, what the hell do you think will happen to your phone as it probably starts to chug correct? Having this enabled safeguards you in case you go over limit and is an excellent feature I dare say. Also if you never over use your physical RAM installed, then parked virtual memory, RAM, will not be tearing up your storage as one may be predicting. It just does not work this way. And this is coming from a PC technician. I have no idea where you, phone users, come up with this information or have it sourced from. Please cross-reference your stuff. Peace and to a thank you and good night. So hopefully that puts this topic to rest as the feature rich S23 Ultra remains still as rich hopefully after the simple, and perhaps even logical explanations of how the tech actually works or will in relation to not also harming the battery as may have been suggested also. Another blooper in the list for this budding tech presenter I'm afraid. Moving forward my mood never dampened and since to reiterate this experience feels great, and as fresh as a juicy apple hopefully not strayed too far from a tree my decision has catapulted me back into an area that is, not exactly my expertise. So on to the accessories we go. As of course the PC tech enthusiast I am I could not help but be considering changing, or even perhaps say turning the S23 into a laptop if not being too obnoxious. Obviously to improve my flow, through the utilization of another awesome source feature from Samsung that has definitely developed into an excellent experience, and that is Direx. In a nutshell Direx is Samsung's desktop operating system that I have held high hopes for since using it almost four years ago, and predominantly beta features at that. Have. I'm glad to announce, been implemented by Direx in the end successfully. One feature being that even apps not natively supporting desktop mode, can have resizing capabilities added, so as to view more favorably the unsupported app in the Direx operating system. But enough there, as trust me when I say, it's gonna be good, even with the full moon shots aside, this virgin new mobile hand, shall be getting fair use of item in my own tech's ecosystem with hopefully a docking station hybrid S23 Ultra laptop. Set up in the near feature if the price is right. Android accessories I think fit showcasing alongside the Samsung S23 Ultra mobile phone include one of these laptop boxes, should we say, but also and. To be honest if it's not the docking station set up as a first accessory board, one feature I just must have thanks to the phone's versatility is that of Direx. I will still be able to use it similarly but through connection of phone either wirelessly or wired to a Windows PC virtually. Eager to test. Nowadays I'm understanding that copy and paste functionality if not much more robust interaction between both operating systems, Windows and Android Directs, now exist in unison far more cohesively than they did 3.5 years ago or more. Both in functionality as well as system use allocation as Directs used to be a complete, ho, on PC resources these bugs and many others on both fronts are kept in line and resources, only used when specifically utilized under strenuous load activity enabling far more than just your simple mobile phone. Finally, yes. Side note the laptop or screen and keyboard trackpad combos vary, 
but a well-specced one should not cost more than $340 Australian dollars if shopping around, and willing to go halfway around the world for one. Speaking of hose bringing us to another and the final accessory must have, for my personal ambitious work, flow, to be increased, along with production value from the Technus corner, is a unique gimbal for the phone. Again, juices will flow, but only with the $350 Australian dollars minimum for the named, Hohem iSteady M6 kit with AI magnetic tracking part, or $248 US dollars. This kit also comes with tripod, 90 cm, extension. The iSteady M6 is a professional three-axis smartphone stabilizer ideal for vloggers, live streamers, and filmmakers who want to create smooth and steady content. It features a magnetic fill light integrated with an AI vision sensor, which offers face and object tracking during the day or at night. Its upgraded three-axis structure offers free movement from all angles. Plus, its 360 degrees infinite panning rotation. iSteady 7.0 anti-shake system enables myself to get stunning and epic shots even while solo recording. Now that gets everybody's juices flowing for some great workflow for sure. So that brings us to the end of the Technus Corner's path into the world of smartphones for now, at least on camera. I'll be sure to keep you all posted on any development in relation to the Samsung S23 Ultra or any more exciting accessories. That may just get us all moist through, let's be honest now. Peace. Technus Corner signing out. Instantly, on a charge, extensively, because I know I'd only be about half full. And I want to make sure it's completely full on the first charge, plus some. So tomorrow morning, she's going to be turned on for the first time. That's our unboxing of our Samsung S23 Ultra 12 gigabyte, one terabyte version. Maxed out, guys. Heal time. Oh, beautiful. Peeled. And just to confirm... Comes out 50% charged, as you can see. Peace out, y'all.